Here's a cold start from inside the house. <laughs> Let's start this morning with one of the best cold starts your hero out of an SUV. Yeah, that's a Cadillac Escalade V and we're spending a week living with it. drive the new Escalade V-Series back when it launched, it was out in Arizona, but now we have one for a whole week, just to see what it's like. Those amazing curved OLED screens. Today is going to be a busy day. I just got home from a 10-day trip to Las Vegas, which is just way too many days in Vegas. It was for SEMA and then some more work stuff. I desperately need a haircut today, but uh, the Escalade V was dropped off yesterday, so we have a full seven days. And I'm quite excited because it's got massage seats and a supercharged V8, and the exhaust, as you already heard of the cold start, is ridiculous. All right, this is a 682 horsepower, 653 pound-feet of torque, 6.2 liter supercharged V8 SUV. It has launch control. It does things that a vehicle of this size should not be able to do, and it's just hilarious. Like, it, it kind of doesn't make any sense, but I love it so much. The noises are insane. We'll keep showing you that. It's all courtesy of that 6.2 liter V8. It's essentially like an LT4 and a half. So it's got the bigger supercharger from the LT5, which is from the C7ZR1, but it doesn't have the secondary injection. So it's like an LT4 in that regard. So kind of halfway between there, but we're talking nearly 700 horsepower and a three row full size SUV with massage seats and curved OLED screens and a suede headliner. And did I mention it has massage seats? This is just, it's hilarious. I did get to drive it on the first media launch and there's a full review of that this is another week living with it i think i might do a full review with it again just an update later on with more time with the escalade v but i've been really excited to get more time behind the wheel of this thing because i love the latest generation escalade one of my favorite buttons in the escalade v is right here the v mode button you press that and it very quickly changes all the different parameters, steering, suspension, you can change these also. So I actually set suspension the most comfortable one, but brake feel, engine sound, all wheel drive, engine shift. The engine sound change is very apparent, which I will demonstrate shortly. This exhaust in the Escalade V makes no sense for a large, very large luxury SUV. It has essentially like a burble tune. The cracks and burbles and pops on diesel are ridiculous. Probably contributing to the fact that I'm averaging 12.9 MPG. That also makes almost 700 horsepower. I've driven 151 miles and I'm through about a third of a tank already. But ready for this? <laughs> but now listen to this. So let me downshift. supercharger wine but as you let off and as it descends to just about 3,000 rpm maybe a little bit <laughs> it just keeps going I mean, now shift what <laughs> she's a big boy <laughs> So I have driven 265 miles, averaging 13.4 mpg, and burned over three quarters a tank of fuel, and I can guarantee you the Escalade V has quite a large fuel tank. So this is obviously a thirsty vehicle, it has a supercharged V8, it weighs as much as a small house, but look, the best on a freeway, I was able to get into the 20s, so that's impressive, like you can do that in this vehicle, it's just when you do launch control and drive like a child, you'll burn a lot of fuel, so I, I need to put gas in this, this will be a two or maybe three tank a week type of vehicle. I'm heading to the gas station now, so I can burn off my remaining fuel without fear. <laughs> Holy crap. When the torque converter locks and those shifts, it's like a dual clutch, it just punches them in. The exhaust burbles are ridiculous too. That's a stock luxury SUV. It's still going. In a moment, once we fuel up, I'm gonna do a more detailed interior tour of the Escalade V. It's largely similar to the Escalade Platinum, but there's a couple special touches, like there's a V-badge right there. And then also exterior, we need to take a look at the window sticker and then just keep spending more time with this thing. Actually, I might go to Costco. This has a lot of cargo capacity, so it would be good for Costco trips. <laughs> 
first things first, Starbucks obtained. It's been almost two months since I've been to Costco, which is just too much time, so got some stuff. We'll load up the Escalade. You press the, the badge on the back and that opens the trunk. So the V badge right there. And I already folded down second row seats. There's buttons here that allow you to fold the seats up and down. I don't think you can actually make the seats go up though, but we can try that. Maybe? No, I think it's only down, so bye. No, what am I doing? Oh, that just went forward even, that's, that's not what I meant to do. Okay. Oop, that does work that way. So it doesn't come back, you have to do that manually. We'll load up the Escalade, which is not gonna be a problem because this is a cavernous, massive space. This is, I believe, the regular wheelbase. The extended wheelbase, the ESV, uh, would have much more space back here. It's even longer, but I mean, this is plenty. Success. And then always put your shopping cart back. Those who just leave shopping carts in the middle of parking lots are just terrible people. I just noticed the subtle V logo on one of the spokes of these wheels. That's a pretty cool touch. Let's go. Ooh, it's cold today. Heated seats. Actually, first, gas station. Fuel level low indeed. This is going to be expensive. Let's see how much. Also, uh, the vehicle lowers as soon as you come into park, which is pretty cool too for in and out exit convenience. Air suspension. Now I just watch numbers climb. These screens are just so gorgeous. I love, that's probably my favorite aspect of the interior. Oh, we're done. 20 gallons, $91. Could be worse. Startup screen. So cool. And because it's the V, it fades the Cadillac crest into the V logo. The regular one obviously does not have that. Let's see what the range says. 314 miles. That's actually not a lot. Given that that was lots of gas. Ultimately, who really cares about fuel economy when your SUV sounds like this? <laughs> the paddle shifters don't have the quickest response. I mean, through this 10-speed uh, automatic, but you heard that, right? That's ridiculous. But the coolest thing about this vehicle is how it has a dual personality. I can be in V mode and be obnoxious, but I can just set everything back in the full comfort and it's just an Escalade Platinum with massage seats, heated seats going right now, heated steering wheel. You could option Super Cruise, this one does not have it. Suede headliner, fantastic sound system, headrest speakers, screens for the second row, big panoramic, like it has all of the luxury touches and also a nearly 700 horsepower supercharged V8 that gets 13 mpg. I've already burned three miles of rage in that half a mile I just drove, but who cares? <laughs> you can hear a barest hint of supercharger one. I remember the Cadillac engineer saying they had to tone it down a bit because this has to still be a luxurious cocoon, right? They can't have it whining like crazy like you would find in a C7 Z06 or something, but... Jeez, <laughs> what a monster. I really hope the mic is picking this up. Just listen. That's a factory calibration. <laughs> Your EV can't do this. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think like a Carrera Z01 did that. Cold start through a garage door. <laughs> Sorry, neighbors. <laughs> Honestly, this thing just sounds so ridiculous. It's, it's a sound you would expect out of a Camaro or a Corvette, which makes sense because the engine is effectively a Corvette Z06 engine with a bigger supercharger on it. Just happened to be in a very large, very luxurious SUV. Escalade V just takes to next level, absolute next level. Driven some fast SUVs, Urus, uh, AMG SUVs, X5M, but this is bigger. So like GLS 63, I mean, there's the Durango Hellcat, but none of those really match this in terms of luxury and presence. So yeah, it's a fun machine. We're gonna head out to dinner and a movie with some colleagues and friends. It's getting dark, so the puddle lamps are starting to show up. So the left screen here, like all the Escalades, is a touch screen. You can cycle between these three, control your gauge, your map, the AR camera, which is actually pretty cool. It takes the entire center screen and turns into augmented reality or night vision. You control the heads up display here too. That's the full augmented reality running inbuilt navigation within the vehicle to pop up and show all sorts of stuff. You'll see CarPlay here. It doesn't fill the entire screen, so even though the actual OLED curves out here, got a little bit of info there, you'll see Apple CarPlay just eats up that part of the entire screen. When then you go through the native system is also quite, quite nice. Big 
should not be able to do that. <laughs> this is the best way to wake up every morning. It's so loud. We have the quad exhaust tips back here with the paint matched kind of pseudo diffuser. The actual V touches beyond the quad exhaust tips, a couple badges. It's not like in your face that this is the almost 700 horsepower Escalade V. Called blade tail lights there, which are really cool because they've got a lot of depth to them. You can see the Cadillac logo etched in there. The red paint is gorgeous. The big V badge here on the side. Red calipers of the V logo, upgraded brakes for the V. Because to go fast with something of this size, you do also need to stop quickly. And then up front, we have a slightly more aggressive front fascia. Huge grill for lots of airflow needed. Everything's blacked out there. But from right here, I mean, it looks pretty similar to an Escalade Platinum Sport, which I think is part of the point. It's luxury, right? It's the most subtle and classy way you can have a brutal 700 horsepower SUV. Well, that just ruined my day. That's the first snow of the year. Ah, crap. Winter's here. At least I have heated seats. Well, this cold, white, fluffy crap. Coming down from the sky. That's my cue to try to run away to somewhere warm because that's not close source. I hate winter. So beyond just that V mode button, the Escalade V has a ton of different drive modes that you cycle through with a button here on the left. So I went into snow modes, so you see a little snowflake there, which pretty much just puts everything into a uh, much more slippery condition friendly one. That's my mode, which you can reconfigure some of the stuff. There's a sport mode, which I don't think I should be using right now. Whoop, and they're immediately downshifted. And then snow and ice. This is snow and ice mode, which you'll see all wheel drive is maxed out, which probably means most amount of intervention of all wheel drive, power split there for traction. Engine sound still is halfway up the loudness scale. And then CarPlay pulls back up. Put the AR camera going just for funsies, because I mean, I'm gonna complain a lot because it's snowing, but when it first snows, it does look kind of pretty. It covers everything, the trees, but it's now cold, wet, and miserable. So I'm still gonna complain because screw that. But the air camera looks pretty cool. What is this white stuff? It's, no, I'm not happy, Andrew. What is this white stuff? Ready, Andrew? Uh, uh, let's just stay on the road. We will, <laughs> it's okay. This is all wheel drive. It's oh, currently it? in rear wheel drive mode, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Uh, that's impressive. <laughs> what well, this torque tires converter? are on it? I don't know, big ones. So this has a refrigerator here. And an SD card. Yes, yeah, an SD card. What's on it? I don't know. Probably maps. Probably navigation stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but there's a refrigerator in this here. This guy? Yeah. And it, well, don't refrigerate my son. The car's off. You don't need to refrigerate my <laughs> Yeah, the air suspension drops it. Andrew was just like, oh, it just lowered itself. There's Adrian's CT5V, which she has to replace soon with an Escalade V. It's on video, that's official. Adrian, you will soon have an Escalade V. Congratulations. I'm excited for you. This makes a lot more power and sounds a lot. Yeah, a fully blacked out Escalade V for Adrian to replace her CT5V. I think she'd like that. All right, inside we go. Off to lunch. Lunch. Yeah. No, you could. Yeah, I could. No. If we put seven people in your RS7, put seven people in this, I would beat you. No, you would. Let's do it. Sure. Oh, God. <laughs> Jeez. That's launch control in the snowy wet. This thing is a beast. That was all four wheels scrambling for grip. Yeah, I gotta be honest. I'm surprised that stayed straight. <laughs> that was, yeah. I mean, a little, that was, that was fun. Car. Fit in that spot? Yeah, it'll fit. I think. I guess we'll find out. We have overhead cameras, which are great. But this is still the size. Oh, there's a person behind there. It picked it up. And you guys doubted me. I once worked a summer Can you even as a get out? Can you get out? Yeah, so this is normal. I am like centered perfectly. Okay. Bunch of skeptics. All right, we're gonna get you lunch. Just yelled at Andrew for slamming the door. It has soft closed doors. You have to be respectful. There you go. I slammed it earlier, so I'm just gonna, wait, it didn't latch. Uh -oh. There we go. <laughs> it's snowing again. One more cold start. <laughs> I'm never gonna get tired of that. This radiant red tin coat paint sure looks nice under the lights here in the parking lot, despite the snow. It's a really nice pearly red. I'm a fan. Running boards come on. Oh, that's one complaint I have. 
if you look underneath at those DR, uh, the side running lights, you can very clearly see the individual little LEDs. I think they should have put some sort of diffuser on that to make it look more premium because you can see the individual little lights and that just makes it look a little cheap. The only thing I could complain about when like the lighting and exterior on the Escalade. I almost forgot to share the window sticker. So it's a 2023 Escalade V series. They come really well optioned from the factory. So it's like a loaded Escalade Platinum with all the tech features, the luxury features, the curved OLED screens, the leather, the heated cooled massage front seats. So there's only a couple options. This one has the radiant red tent coat paint, which is actually a little bit pricey at $1,225. The console refrigerator with freezer. $700, it's freezer? So I guess apparently this one has the freezer function. I knew it was a refrigerator. Didn't realize it had a freezer function. Could you like put popsicles in there maybe? Um, also a $50 credit for the missing second row windows. That, uh, that uh, not windows, the windows are there. The express up, so the one button up for the second row is not there. I believe that's a chip shortage related problem whenever they give you a $50 credit. So the front two windows have the auto up, but the second row ones do not. So as option, it's 151,865. Because it has a nearly 700 horsepower supercharged V8, we have 11 MPG city, 16 highway, combined 13. I'm seeing about that 13.3 MPG combined. I have beat indicated on a freeway, like I've gotten into the 20s, I think, um, versus 16 here that it's rated at, but I mean, it's, it's gonna be thirsty. <laughs> you spend 13,000 more in fuel costs over five years, but I mean, it's a $150,000 SUV, so I don't think that is a huge problem. Since we just talked about pricing, we should talk about market value because they are very different from the actual MSRP and what these are selling for. So deliveries just started maybe a month or two ago. Initially, I saw them, some dealers asking 100,000 over. So they were selling for, or being asked for at least, about a quarter million dollars. They seem to have settled closer to the 50,000 over, so $200,000. 200K, 250K, is it worth it? I mean, it's, it's hard to say that. For 200K, you can get like a GLS Maybach, which with like the second row seats, that's like a private jet for the road, the luxury is unmatched, but nothing out there has the performance and the noises that this thing can do. Yes, a Hellcat Durango may be a bit faster, more power, but nothing can match the dual personality that this can go from that just obnoxious, ferocious, absurd supercharged V monster to an Escalade Platinum with massage seats and suede headliner and a fantastic AKG sound system and the curved OLED screens. And then I mentioned it has massage seats. So the dual personality is very hard to match. At 150K, I mean, I love it. It's, it's ridiculous. It puts a grin on your face and it it defies the laws of physics. I mean, I was doing launch control in freezing, snowy, wet weather, and it put it in V mode in all-wheel drive to the max, and it just kind of hooks and goes. Yeah, it's fighting for traction, but I was honestly shocked. And when I first drove it out in Arizona on a media launch, we took an ESV Escalade V, so an extended longer one, up some curvy mountain roads with the magnetic ride, put it in V mode. Like, it did things that I did not expect something of this size can do. And like I said, just a dual personality. It's like a brute in a suit. And nothing matches the noise this thing makes. I swear, like, a C7Z06 doesn't even sound like this. And that has a supercharged LT4. Uh, it's honestly ridiculous when you put it in a V mode. Giggle inducing. I have loved taking friends and colleagues for a ride this week, just showing them what this thing is like. Does it make sense? Not really. I mean, 13 MPG. I've spent like $100 in fuel in the last two days. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's massive. It probably doesn't even fit in my garage. But I just love it. Like, the last hurrah of the internal combustion V8 in this Escalade V series. It's just ridiculous in every way. I love it. It's been a ton of fun. Make sure you check out my full review and the initial videos I did when this came out, the media drive out in Scottsdale, Arizona, but it's been a fun week living with it. Hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Thanks for watching.